most people that have dropped the series have done it before we even finish the first saga. So all I need is for this to get us through the East Blue Faster, to get the vibes across, and hopefully be good. I'm so glad we leaned into the pirate map aesthetic. We even incorporate Momu in here? Ooh, and that transition though? <laughs> I love this goofy flag here. It feels like almost all the flags are a little bit different now that I look at it. That's a good detail. You didn't have to do that. This is a world of pirates. Oh, I love the narration so much. All right, the first scene, Logtown. On behalf of your world government. Oh, that's a thick accent. <laughs> I was not expecting that. It makes sense. They're all from different parts of the world. That That's cool. Yeah. The so-called king of the pirates. Look at him. He's smiling. He's goofing. <laughs> that bounty poster hidden in the front of the screen. It's like, yeah, you know who he is. Oh, and the green cloak. <laughs> he knows exactly what he's doing. You brought this upon yourself. I'm so glad that we're establishing this connection between Garp and Roger so early. Where is your treasure? Oh, he asked the question. <laughs> Also, early Mihawk is looking good. Setting off a race across the seas to find the Pirate King's hidden treasure, the One Piece. This is a really strong start, I'm gonna be honest. Well... Oh, I know we have to introduce him somehow, but that kind of threw me off a little bit, how he's staring at me. Once I realized that it wasn't a fourth wall break and it was just Luffy talking to the seagull, I was way more okay with it. Oh, Luffy's a little bit of a thinker. He's got he's got a brain on him. Well, I mean, he's... Mm, well, does he? I mean, he's stranded. He didn't drown, is what I'm saying. That is a gorgeous ship. I totally forgot about Alvita's ship, I'm gonna be honest. We only see it for, like, what, a chapter? But still. Even the glitter coming out of the cannon. The pink painted cannonball. Like, the attitude is one thing, but they got a vibe going. Oh! Ooh, I love how we're portraying Alvita. Where? Is the pirate hunter Roronoa Zoro. It's pretty cool that we're already trying to combine multiple narratives together like that, with Alvita purposely searching for Zoro. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. Who's the most powerful pirate on the seas? Captain Alvita! This is a pretty good first scene at Kobe, too. Just his face says it all. <laughs> Got him with that FNAF jump scare. Got him. Parts of scum. They're thieves and murderers. Not the pirates, I know. Okay, so Alvita shows us the negatives of piracy, which is where Luffy's flashback comes in to show us the more complexities of piracy. Shanks, he's back. That's adorable. Windmill Village. That's a weird name. I wonder why it's called that. Ah, right, Captain. Pretend it's a leg of lamb. You wouldn't drop that. Okay, so I saw an image of him from the trailers, but I didn't know how to react to that. But now that I look at him, oh, honestly, I'm still on the fence. I don't know how to feel about him. It's not even the acting. I think the acting is fine. I think it's more the, like, costume design. I don't know. Everything feels so sterile. Even the floor feels really clean. There's no trash on the floor. Is it weird that I want trash on the floor? See, but then we get Yasop, and I think Yasop looks pretty good. I'm ready to join your crew. The sea isn't a child's game. See, because I think these interactions are golden, though. You should never let anyone tell you what you can't do. If I did that, I never would have left my village to go find the One Piece. So, bam, again, we're setting up themes of control, power, dreams, and freedom. The one thing I really cared for them to get right was the themes. Like, no matter how much changed, the soul had to stay there. And I think all of these interactions so far have really gotten us covered. As soon as I'm out of here, I'm on my way to the Grand Line. <laughs> I love that with every single sentence, Kobe looks more and more afraid. Is it weird that the whole crew is sleeping on the floor? Don't they have beds? Would Alvita give them beds? Maybe that actually makes sense. Which way is north? Ah, <laughs> oh, you woke up the whole neighborhood with that one. He said that you were mean. Ooh, hurt her feelings. <laughs> there was no need to do that backflip. You're just styling on him. Oh, first rubber effect. The back of the outfit stretches is good. You even see a little bounce in the skin once it shoots out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was goofier. <laughs> you just gotta accept that this is what it looks like, and then it gets better. Gun the gun! Pistol! 
Oh, that is brutal. The almost ragdoll-like physics when they fly out of the screen. It's such a good way to end a fight. Even Alvita scream. Ah, good job on that. You've been following me for three days. Ooh, Baroque works? You should know, it's a high honor to be asked to join our ranks. Membership would make you even more invincible. If they were that serious, they should have sent someone better than number seven. Ooh, deep cut. Ooh, this is some good choreography. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a deep cut. The one thing I do hope gets better is that Zoro's voice is really edgy. Zoro's got an edgy voice. At least you didn't get your eye. Aiming for it, but missed. That would be a wild story to have to explain. I want everyone to see my scar. It's a lesson behind the scar. And you didn't earn this one. I like that Shanks is educating Luffy here as the father figure in this moment. Again, the acting is fine here. Then let me earn it. My ship already has an anchor. I'm not an anchor. Even that, <laughs> got him. Also, not really gonna get a chance to mention this again, I love the audio and the soundtrack for this episode. In the background of this scene specifically, you can hear Binx's brew. Yeah, take that, box! I love how the Devil Fruits really have an aura in this episode. Is it weird that that kinda looks delicious? Bring us your best whiskey. So I really like this rendition of the bar fight. Shanks is a very decent person here. Perhaps this will make up for it. And then like, come on, man, that's messed up. I like that the crew is ready to throw down just in case. But because Shanks doesn't escalate it, we can see the whole crew laughing and even Shanks plays it off. You, got, you good, huh, Captain? You got a mop? <laughs> this is the scene that told me on all of the crew. It is so charming. Why didn't you kick his ass? Not everything can be solved with violence. I told you you weren't ready. Wait, Luffy. Ooh, that's some good effects work. Luffy! Oh! Deserved. That'll teach him to eat random fruit. You turn my body into rubber. Ooh, another good effect. Even got that subsurface scattering. Kobe, if you could do anything in the world right now, what would it be? It's dumb. Oh, that was so aggressive. I'll spit it out. I've always wanted to be a marine. So we're establishing the character's dreams right now in a pretty faithful way. It is weirdly surprising how compact the story has been so far. This would be like, what, four episodes in the anime by now? Crazy. Help me. So one of the big things I was worried about was how well Nami was going to be portrayed. Mostly because in the promo material, she didn't have a lot of expression. What you got there? Something to share? The physical acting is really good, like pretending to cover up the treasure. Sorry, boys. Thanks for the rescue. Oh, okay, that, that was expressive. <laughs> I'm like worried. I think we're fine. Also, she makes maps. That's like more map time than actual Nami. Oh, we did not. Oh, <laughs> Foxy though. Is it weird that no Marines ever question this? Like even if it's a bounty, it's, it's half a body. Can I buy you a drink? Too tall. That's rough, buddy. Okay, so I saw some discussion where people thought it was weird that a random kid would go up to people and try to give them food, but this is not like the weirdest thing that a child has ever done. Kids are weird. They do that. No reason required. You stupid, stupid girl. Oh, I love how Helmuppo is immediately hateable. Again, we're setting up themes of dreams, power, freedom, all through the lens of food. You drop my food. Delicious. Like, man, the acting for Helmuppo is really satisfying. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just mwah. amazing choreography. Oh, and the cup throw? Zor is a pretty good fighter. Wow, good fighter. That's what I'm saying. All right, talking and polishing an axe is pretty metal. The penalty for assaulting a Marine, seven days strung up in the yard. I mean, Zoro did just beat up a ton of Marines. So I'm saying this because compared to the anime or the manga, we don't really make him do bad things. Like, yeah, he looks bad, but he's not anime bad. That guy was amazing. That's what I'm saying. And what's with the third sword? I mean, where does it even go? If you didn't see any of the promo or watch the series at all, this is a valid question. Like you would assume that he maybe swaps between them, but using all three at once is pretty weird. The great demon. 
Man, I love Hell Nobo as a character. He is someone who is so cocky because he's in control right now. The second he feels like he is not in control by Zoro acting at all, he immediately folds. And then he doubles down on his idea of being confident once he realizes that he's in a safe position. Beautiful acting. When I get down from here. His feet are touching the floor. Get lost. I am lost. That is such a dumb joke. You should join my crew. Pirate. I said that together we'd make a pretty good team. Pirate. You keep saying that. Pirate. Is that all you want? Pirate. It's weird that we don't get a flashback here. I think Zoro's backstory is probably the weakest of all of the characters, but still. Good luck on the sword thing. Pirate. We also get the payoff for what Nami was doing. She's going after the map of the Grand Line. I'm just following orders, but if you want to question Axe Hand Morgan, be my guest. So a lot of people must know the reputation of Axe Hand Morgan, right? I mean, they gotta look at that statue, but I love how Nami uses that information to scare this Marine officer. Hey. Hi. <laughs> oh, the choreography is beautiful here. Look at that dynamic movement. I love that we give Nami this baton. It gives her a really interesting fighting style compared to Zoro or Luffy. I'm taking you into custody for trespassing on a Marine base. Better take yourself into custody too, because you're not a marine. And now you're looking for my map. He has become a thinker. Outstanding character development. Hey, get back here! All right, hot take. I think that if you like the G8 arc, you will like the live action. If you hated the G8 arc, you will not like the live action. This just gives me so many strong G8 vibes. Axe Hand Morgan. I wonder why they call him that. <laughs> All right, I did not expect us to see Helmipo's assets. I know this is Romance Dawn, but I did not expect to see the moon. Also, it's weirdly in character for Helmipo to be pretending to use a sword like that. Pretending that he's cool, going like whooshy whoosh with the sword. I've never seen you before. I'm a transfer from the 77th, sir. Put in a request to serve under your command. Again, I love how Nami is characterized. She's using Morgan's own ego against him. And you pickpocketed him? She's amazing. That was amazing. That's what I'm saying. Let's get one thing straight. I am never joining anything with you. I hate pirates. Hate them. So I find this to be a really interesting change, where Nami used Luffy's gullibleness in order to benefit her own means. Here, she constantly rejects Luffy, outright rejecting anything that he believes in. I'm gonna use it to find the One Piece and become king of the pirates. Ah, uh, he said, he said the thing. Okay, am I the only one who thought that it was supposed to be this one that was supposed to be flipped? Because they're all facing the same direction, except for this one. Maybe he is a thinker. I have an idea. He's a thinker. Your idea. Okay, it looks dumb, but what are your other options? Let him cook. <laughs> That's like a five story fall. I'm surprised the ribs are still in one piece. Also, I like that this is the type of vibe that we're going for the type where you can fall off of a five story building and survive. How did you do that? That's what I'm saying. These are my favorite types of fight scenes because I'm always looking at the background characters. Here we see Luffy fighting this marine that tried to sneak up on him. Nami's taking out these two over here. But where are these guys running? <laughs> That's so goofy. It feels like the crew is a little bit weaker or at least overwhelmed, which I think is a fine change. You can still feel that they're being overwhelmed even if the crew doesn't actually struggle too much. Also, Zoro feels like he didn't really have an obligation to come back besides feeling bad, besides maybe paying back Luffy. Pirate. I don't think this is as strong as in the manga, but maybe we're gonna build to something. I alone captured Kuro of the Thousand Plants. Ooh, I like that. I don't think we mentioned that in the original. We wouldn't know who that guy was, but sure makes him more intimidating, I guess. Oh, style on him. This is what made me feel like I was okay with the crew being a little bit weaker. It's not purely that they're weak, but more so inexperienced. Like that, he just did friendly fire to his own teammate. Even Zoro's face is like, dude, really? 
Oh, this is so dramatic. This goes hard. Oh, and the launch, it works. Like we somehow managed to incorporate something that was really dumb and actually make it feel practical. Like this is a practical move. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that. Wait! Oh, that's gotta hurt his mechanical jaw, right? We need to get this safe out of here. Honestly, it's a power move. Also, he didn't really need to do that, right? Like, I don't think we've established why Zoro would help carry the treasure. Like, help him fight? Sure. But carry the treasure to a boat and then travel off with him? You're under arrest. <laughs> Kobe? So I find it really interesting that we didn't end with Kobe becoming a Marine here at Shellstown and we're instead stretching out his narrative across multiple episodes, especially since we're going to incorporate that with Garp. We do that already, so I find it to be an interesting shift. Oh, they're so unsettling. I appreciate that we stuck with it, though. Bogard? <laughs> what are you doing here? Man has like four pages total. Look, in my mind, it feels like we always had a special place for Bogard where he could be like a detective trying to figure out stuff for the Marines. Please let that happen for the live action. They were pirates, Captain. Again, combining multiple narratives. Good job. We get more of a reason for all the characters to have beef with one another. And they got the map. They must have been planning this for months. He's a thinker. <laughs> He's looking good. The trailers did him so dirty. This does make him look crazier, but him posing on the chair is just so much better. I think most of my worries are gone. I think we're good. We can always trip later on, but this is a strong first episode. All right, thanks to all of my patrons who bought a boat in order to actually become pirates, except it was bought off of like Wish, so it's not as big of a boat as we thought, and it also couldn't float. But hey, it's fine. Uh, we might not have a boat, but it's a submarine. Pirate.